In Australia, the variant of Volkswagen Tiguan that most people buy is actually the top spec 162 TSI R-Line. That's the one that people want. And so a car like this, the actual Tiguan R, makes a whole lot of sense. It is launching in Australia alongside the Golf R hatch with the wagon coming in a few weeks. And interestingly, the wagon will be priced exactly the same as this Tiguan R here at 68,990 before on road costs. So you actually have the choice of two very distinct Volkswagen R models with the same heart, but a different focus. The focus here, of course, is that this is a medium SUV. It's a family size SUV, but one that, as we have noticed at Chasing Cars, is extremely well packaged and is exceptional at what it fits inside its relatively compact 4.5 metre length. But that's almost incidental here because what this is about is this. Ah, then the performance that it brings. The look of this Tiguan is what was introduced last year. It's the facelifted Tiguan, so it has a slightly higher lip here on the front of the bonnet to give it a little bit more presence. And here we've got IQ light, Matrix LED headlights, which work extremely well at night time, adding a little bit of glamour to the car. A lot of the changes to the Tiguan R mirror exactly what happens to the Golf. We have a completely new front bar here with all of this different vintage going on to give it a lot more visual presence. That R badge is new. We also have little R fillets down the side and these matte silver mirrors. And even the wheels are the same design. Here they're called Esterol, although we're in the Golf, they're 19 inch. In the Tiguan R, they're 21 inches with 255, 35 R21 tires. Now, aside from the drivetrain the Tiguan shares with the Golf, it's the 235 kilowatt, 400 newton metre, 2 litre turbo petrol in an international market tune. It also has the same brake package as the Golf R. It's 357 millimetre front discs, cross drilled with two piston calipers and these blue calipers here. I should also say that the colour here is lapis blue metallic. It's a hero colour for the Golf. Uh, and the Tiguan R and is the only one in the range that actually kind of is a colour because you can have black, silver, white or grey. But this blue looks very good. The focus of the Tiguan R though is to have a little bit more embellishment than the Golf. So where the Golf shares these matte mirrors and the sequential indicators front and back, they look really cool. In fact, the lighting signature on this car in general is fantastic as we shall see at the back. The look of the Tiguan is more about adding a little bit more chromey bling to it. So we have this chrome around the windows here, around the DLO, along the edges of the side skirts here, these matte aluminium roof rails where all of that stuff on the Golf is black and it doesn't have roof rails at all. But this is about adding a little bit of class on top of the R-Line Tiguan that already looked pretty polished and already had 21 inch wheels. So this needed to amp that up further. The rear brake package on the Tiguan R is also the same as on the Golf R. It's 310 millimeter ventilated discs, which do look a little bit lost in the 21s on this car, but as we shall discover on the track, they actually do a pretty good job of holding up under pressure. Speaking of which, underneath the rear end of this car, it's kind of like the piece de resistance of what this model is for both the Golf and the Tiguan, and that is that it ditches the Howard X all-wheel drive system for a proper twin clutch system that can send up to 100% of drive to outside rear wheel and actually stop the inside rear wheel to make it really pivot into a corner and give it sort of proper agility. This is not an on-demand all-wheel drive system. It's much more of a mechanical involving a live system. Speaking of a live, when you do the start up in the car and open it up, the, both the Tiguan and the Golf have this really cool lighting signature that runs through in these LED tail lights, puts R down on the ground from the mirrors at the front, and also sequential indicators in the back here too, which just gives it a really great element of class. Some people might think it's a little bit wanky, but I personally love it. Although this doesn't have the full banded light at the front. What it does have is very simple badging on the back. Anyone who debadges their car is going to love the Tiguan R because the only thing you've got is the R and the Volkswagen badge, of course, which in this case doesn't open the boot. It's down here for the electric tailgate, which reveals, again, something else that the Tiguan is great at, and that is a 615 litre boot with a multi-level height floor and a slideable rear seat. This is all about fitting the maximum amount of utility into a car that really doesn't take up that much space. And this is also a performance vehicle. So, if you're a family that wants both of those things, then the Tiguan R is very much something you should be looking forward to. Although, would a Golf R wagon do that better? That's what we're here to discover.
the Tiguan is quite a bit older than the Golf 8, so it does have an element of the past mixed with sort of latest tech for VW. So what you're looking at in here is essentially a Mark 7.75 Golf rather than a Mark 8. So the new things in here were introduced in 2021 for the facelifted Tiguan, i.e. the capacitive HVAC system here, this 9.2 inch screen here with some gesture control. We've got all the capacitive switches on the new generation steering wheel with Volkswagen's new badge, some adjustments to the digital cockpit and that sort of stuff. But many people will be happy to know that a lot of the exposed switches are still here. It's not all run through a touch screen like it is in the Golf R. And so that does kind of work a little bit in the Tiguan R's favour. If you want to get ESC Sport, for example, quickly you just hit the ESC button right there and lo and behold you're there. You don't have to do movements on the screen here to get that stuff to happen. Drive mode is also just here. You hit that, it's right there. You can go Comfort Sport, which is a new setting, which is more sporty than the old normal setting, and Race and Individual, which lets you change everything, including even choosing a pure mode for the engine. So you don't have the synthesized sound of the induction coming through the speaker at the dashboard here. It is just pure with the exhaust blurting in the background, which some people may prefer. It hasn't been offered on a car like this before. What it doesn't get that the Golf R does though are the extra modes, so it doesn't get the special stage, it doesn't get a drift mode. It's meant to have some kind of an off-road mode, although I can't necessarily see it right now. That's because it's in the dial here, it's not on the screen. So you just turn the dial and you've got a snow mode here, and you've got off-road auto mode, and you've got off-road expert driving mode. Although how far you can go off-road with 21-inch wheels on this remains to be seen, but I have done that in Namrock and it does a surprisingly good job. What is also missing in here is wireless charging. You just don't have it in a Tiguan still in Australia, so we just have a rubberized pad here with two USB-C ports, a 12 volt outlet and that sort of stuff. We have the optional stereo in here, but that has been removed from the car as standard. So it's a 10 speaker Harman Kardon 480 watt system. It's a thousand dollar option, but had to be removed to make sure that supply could be maintained with all this semiconductor stuff going on. This car doesn't have the $2,000 optional panoramic sunroof, which means it has all of these sort of drop down storage bins that are a great place to lose all your shit and forget about where you've put it. But, um, and it's kind of a bit intrusive. I would absolutely choose the sunroof because this is ultimately not about being an absolutely hardcore SUV. It's still trying to be a family car. And yet it also does the hardcore thing as well. Now what the Tiguan R brings is a bunch of stuff that is new for this model. It has a sports steering wheel here with its own blue stitching. It has a little blue section here in the bottom wheel spoke with R in it. It has an R button on the steering wheel. So while you're driving quickly, you can just hit R there and it instantly puts it in race and brings it up in the drive mode here. So you don't have to go down and faff about here. It's just here. You also have a larger sort of mash anthracite steering wheel paddles which are more sporty than the normal ones if you hold the left one down it'll instantly go to as low a gear as possible which is kind of cool the seats are also nappa leather with this sort of cool faux carbon fiber outside leather and blue stitching a bit of cloth on the inside they're not as huggy as the golf ones they're more upright and a little bit more traditional but they are still really comfortable and again we have all of that utility that you expect in a tiguan so we have proper door grabs, we have comfortable door armrests, we have carpeted bins down here. This tiny little piece of um, nature's enemy fits in the door so easily, you could easily fit a one and a half litre bottle in there, more cup holders in the centre here, and the storage where the wireless charging should be. But it's just all really, really workable, as well as pretty much every safety thing you can think of that's available in a Volkswagen, including travel assist, by hitting this steering wheel button just here, you also get your own digital instrument pack in the Tiguan R, although it isn't as comprehensive as the one in the new Golf, and does seem a little bit rudimentary. I feel like it isn't quite as polished here as it is here and down here. In the back seat of the Tiguan R, it's pretty much no different to any other Tiguan other than the blue stuff that you can see, like the Tiguan R mats with a blue edging around them, more piping in the seats, again, more Napa leather, just like the front. And we have anthracite headlining, which does kind of make me think that's a little bit oppressive and I'd prefer to have a full glass roof because that would really open this interior and it very much deserves every bit it can get because it's already really expansive. Like the view in here is great. The seat comfort is really good. You can sit three people in this. This seat is not uncomfortable at all. 
We have another digital climate control here just for the back seat, uh, single USB and a 12 volt outlet there. We have a folding down armrest in the centre here with a pair of cup holders, but we could also fit at least a one litre bottle in the doors. It's got this little bit of misery in here now, but you know, this is actually really usable. This bit here is again another proper door grab and in front of me here we have stuff like uh, map pockets on the, both of the front seats and these two little things for smartphones and stuff and various other accoutrements that you want to chuck in there. But this is about sort of bringing everything it can to the table family wise. Oh, I also forgot to mention that we have a 15 position backrest on both sides and this seat can go from this position here all the way to here so you can maximize the boot space or bring the children closer to the front so this level of utility isn't always something we associate with a high performance suv this tiguan r takes none of the normal practicality away it just adds extra on top so if that's something that sounds like it's your bag then click on the link below the video which can help you arrange a test drive or download a brochure the combined fuel consumption figure for the Tiguan R is 8.8 litres per 100 kilometres, drinking 98 octane. The warranty for Volkswagen in Australia is five years or unlimited kilometres, where the recommended service intervals are every 12 months or 15,000 kilometres, with the five-year service plan for the Tiguan R costing $3,100. As for insurance, over the past 12 months, the median budget direct customer has paid $1,065 to comprehensively insure a Volkswagen Tiguan. However, everybody's situation is different and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account like where you live, whether you garage your car and your driving history. It's interesting that Volkswagen chose to launch the Tiguan R and the Golf R together here today, although only the Golf Hatch, because they do share so much in common. This Tiguan R does have the same engine tune as the Golf R Hatch being 235 kilowatts and 400 newton meters from its Evo 4 2 litre turbo petrol. The torque runs from 2,000 to 5,600, and then the power picks up at 5,600 and goes to 6.5. So this is an engine with a really broad spread of abilities, and it's combined with a seven-speed wet-clutch DSG, which is also performance-oriented. So, you know, they're virtually the same as that part on paper. And in practice, they're not far behind each other either. The 0 to 100 claim for the Tiguan R is 5.1 seconds, and for the Golf R it's 4.8. Both of them have launch control that works really well, and this doesn't feel any slower than the Golf. In fact, driving it around Sydney Motorsport Park here today, I reckon they're kind of almost line ball. The difference really isn't that much. Where the differences do start to come into play is basically the height of the cars. This car here only weighs about 140 kilos more than a Golf R wagon, and obviously a bit more again than the hatch, but it stands just over 200 millimetres taller. That's the height that makes the difference here. Yet, the Tiguan R does a surprisingly adept job at being hammered around here, lap after lap after lap. Eventually, those 21 inch hand cooks do start to come off a bit, but we've been doing this for kind of several hours with different drivers, and yeah, it's not as sharp as it was to begin with, but that's not surprising. There's very few SUVs in the world, other than really good things like Porsche GDSs and stuff, that can handle doing that sort of thing. The uprated brake package also holds up really well. It's cross-drilled front discs, ventilated rears. They just feel like they're sort of, I wouldn't say unbeatable, but it takes a long while for the pedal to start to sort of lower to the floor. And it really requires fairly ham-fisted braking or full lap time braking to make them come to that. They actually hold up pretty well. But what really sells this car is the fact that it has that twin clutch rear diff which is just like the Golf R does, just like an Audi RS3 does and just like the old Ford Focus RS did. So that means that it's right up the top end in that echelon of sort of performance hatch that has the capability of transferring all that drive 100% to either rear wheel to really pivot it into a corner. It doesn't feel like it pivots as much as the Golf R does because it is taller and heavier but it's all about the way that it helps it turn in. It does have an agility that 
builds on the agility of the 162 TSI Tiguan, which, as you know, if you watch Chasing Cars, we already think that's like a hot hatch on stilts anyway, certainly for a medium SUV, and yet this takes that to a whole nother level. Like 5.1 seconds to 100 is way better than 6.5, and, and then it just keeps on pulling. At the end of the straight here at Sydney Motorsport Park, the Tiguan R is doing almost 220. That is not hanging about. And I reckon if you put semi-slicks on this car and took it to a track day, then you'd be embarrassing more than your fair share of pretty exalted machinery. Much like the Golf R, the Tiguan R has the same steering wheel, it has the R button on the end here that you can press to bring it up quickly, bring it into race mode, and then actually easier than the Golf, you just can hit ESC Sport right here rather than scrolling down in the menu. So the older generation cabin actually has some benefits over the newer car because it's actually easier to access and doesn't require reading the manual to work out how to do stuff. That said, the steering wheel heating button is just here and you might wonder why in spirited driving that the wheel rim is so hot and that's because you've accidentally switched it on. But at least it's not the voice recognition that often happens in other cars, which is super annoying. Now. I suppose what puts the Tiguan into position is that there actually are few other high performance SUVs like this at this price point. We have the RS Q3 as I've already mentioned and that's 90 grand, more than 90 grand without the twin clutch rear axle that the only the RS3 has in Audi's range. And then you have something like Hyundai's Kona N which is front wheel drive, which is a small SUV, not a medium SUV, and I don't know whether it has quite the sort of performance appeal, and certainly not quite as much performance as the Tiguan. So this, for just under 70,000, not including options like the stereo and the sunroof, and obviously drive away what's at 75k-ish, there's kind of nothing really to compete against it. As I've already mentioned, the Tiguan R is very much in a kind of a land of its own. It has competition within the Volkswagen Group with the RSQ3, but this is a more dynamic car with perhaps not as much level of performance, but a much cheaper price and all-wheel drive, which compares to the front drive Hyundai that I mentioned, which is just not in the same league as this car in terms of space and utility. This is very much something on its own for really quite a surprisingly great price. If you think sort of mid to late 70s on road for a car that already has I think a thousand deposits and had 7,000 expressions of interest. This is a car that people really want to know about. So I suppose, should you buy a Tiguan R over a Golf R wagon? We haven't driven the Golf R wagon yet because there's only one in the country at the moment, but it will drive very much the way the hatch does. And I think the difference is really just the center of gravity. In the Tiguan, you sit quite a lot taller. You do feel like you're more on top of the car than in the car. And it isn't quite as involving around corners, but for a medium SUV, this blows everything else out of the water. If you think the normal 162 TSI R-Line was fun to drive, then wait till you have a go at this because this is really a whole nother level again. And I feel like a lot of people are gonna love that, especially if your kids don't get car sick. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell, and tell us what you think about the Volkswagen Tiguan R or about chasing cars. Thanks for watching.